Hey guys, we're Adam and Steph, and we're converting this old school bus into our first tiny home on wheels. And in this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to install an RV window into a school bus. This video is a direct sequel to our how-to sheet metal video. You can't install RV windows without sheet metal. If you're new to our channel, we have an entire series of us building out our school bus. This video is gonna be a little bit different because it's more of an instructional video because we find there's a lot of gaps in information online. Now, obviously there are RV windows and so there's gonna be gaps in information because they're not designed to be put into a school bus. But because we're doing everything custom, we can make it fit. A couple of the key pieces of information that are missing are sourcing windows and sizing windows. We're also gonna to touch on everything you'll need to install these windows, and then we'll jump right into a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to install them. So if you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you guys around more often, and let's get right into the video. The first thing we're going to talk about today is sourcing these windows, the brand, and the cost. We got our windows from Lippert Components, which is a company down in the United States. We'll link them below and also put their phone number right here so you can check them out. We opted to get the seamless kinds of windows, which is their 3000 series, but they have lots of different options, so definitely check out all their options. We really wanted the 3000 series windows because of their frameless design. We really wanted our windows to sort of blend in with the black side of our bus. So it just sort of looks like an original bus. Lipper Components is pretty much the main manufacturer of RV windows. So you can source these windows at your local RV store. However, you will pay the markup price for your RV store. We ordered our windows directly from Lippert Components and we live in Canada and we were expecting to pay a heavy shipping and duties fee, but surprisingly enough, it was all included in the cost. So what is the cost of these windows? Everyone wants to know. We did splurge on these windows. If you watched our last window video, you know that we splurged on these windows and we paid about $200 to $500 per window and that's in US dollars. The smallest window being the $200 one and our biggest window being our $500 one. If you're converting a schoolie like we are, I think the main reason that RV windows are so attractive to people is because they can be tinted really nice and they're also insulated and they come with a nice screen. The original windows that comes with the bus are not insulated, they're not tinted, and sometimes they don't even close properly. Something that we learned pretty quickly is that Lipper Components sells all their components separately. So they usually sell their windows as replacement windows for the RVs. So they don't come with the trim ring or the crank knobs. So if you are ordering these windows, those are things that you need to include in your order. The trim ring costs $35 and the knob costs $5. Okay, next we're gonna talk about window sizing and placement. When placing a window, Something to keep in mind is where the rivets are in the sheet metal. And if you're coming straight from our sheet metal video and you haven't done your sheet metal yet, I'd recommend figuring out where your windows are gonna be and don't put your rivets in, in the location that your window will be. This window is a great example of how rivets can affect your placement. Now, because of the rivets and where they were, we were limited on the placement of this window. We ideally would have liked the window to be as high as possible, but these rivets are in the way. Now, if we had made these rivet considerations before, we wouldn't have had that issue and we would have had more freedom of choice in where we place the window. You need to make sure that your window either completely cuts out the rivets or that there is enough space that the flange of the window can seal to the sheet metal and clear these rivets. When looking to buy a window, the marketed size of the window is actually the whole size, not the full size of the window. 
So you need to give yourself an extra inch, maybe two inches all the way around. So keep that in mind when searching for which window you should get. So another thing to consider with your placement is the hat channels. If you go through a hat channel, it's gonna be a lot more work. You're gonna to have to do some reframing to divert the structure of the bus around your window. But you don't always have to go through a hat channel. This window right here is right in the middle between the hat channels. And so we were able to install it without having to cut them. This one was much easier to install and fabricate than this one. So when considering your window placement, it's important to not only check your placement outside, but also inside. This window is our kitchen window. And so our countertops end up at about this height. Couldn't go any higher because of the rivets as we were talking about before. And the, we can't go any lower because of our countertop height. So we have to make those considerations in every room when we place our windows. So another thing to consider when buying your windows is your wall thickness. I think it's safe to say that all schoolies are the same where the original hat channels are an inch and a half thick. We've built our steel frames with an inch and a half to match that. So we've got an inch and a half plus your sheet metal plus any steel inch you're gonna be using. So that's an inch and five eighths. We bought an inch and five eighths for our window wall thickness because we're gonna be installing our trim ring inside of the walls. Now, if you're going to be installing your windows after you've built your interior walls, you do need to add that to your wall thickness. We do wanna mention that it is possible to install your windows before you've built your interior walls. And that's exactly what we're doing. But then you're gonna to have to build another trim to conceal that edge of the wall and the original trim ring that comes with the window. Now this is everything you'll need to install RV windows in your schoolie. For the window itself, you're gonna need the window, the trim ring, and the crank out turning knob. To install the window, you're gonna need screws at 832 by a quarter inch. We got ours at Home Depot. And you'll also need butyl tape, which you can get at your local RV supply store. To prep for install, you'll need angle iron or square tubing so that it's structural, or you can also use wood if it's not structural. You're also gonna need paint, tape, and a marker. For tools, you're gonna need a jigsaw with a metal blade, a drill with a metal bit, an angle grinder with a cutting disc, a multi-tool, a welder, and magnets. And of course, for your safety, you might want some earplugs, gloves, and safety glasses. Okay, let's jump right into our step-by-step -step tutorial on how we're going to install this window right here. This window is gonna be right in front of our dinette area, and this is the center point of the table that we're gonna put right here. So that's our guideline. The trim ring is good to have because it's easy to hold, it's nice and light, and it really helps visualize where your window's going. So just like we mentioned when we talked about the placement and the position of your windows, we made sure that this window goes all the way through this beam. So we're gonna fully cut this beam out and fully cut this beam out. That looks pretty good, what do you think? All right, so I've put some just regular painter's tape so that I can stick it onto the bus here. From the inside of the trim, it's gonna be half an inch out is where you're gonna cut. And then another inch out is where the glass of the window is going to lay. So basically an inch and a half from the inside of the trim ring is where you need to make sure you have enough room for the rivets. All right, I threw on the coveralls. That means that we're actually getting down to some dirty work. I'm just gonna use the Sharpie marker and then go back around with the paint pen and just do sort of dots all the way around so that I can see my Sharpie marker better. So I'm just tracing the inside of the trim ring. As you can see, or not see, <laughs> the black marker is very hard to see. So you can't really see what I'm doing. Let's start a C counter here. <laughs> we just trace the inside of the trim ring. So we need to measure half an inch out and that will be our actual cut line. 
I've got my see-through ruler here, which really helps with this part. So I just line it up on the half inch mark and trace all the way around half an inch. Now I'm gonna use my white paint pen and just dot on that line so that I can see it better. These are the rivets that we had to drill out because they were in our way. Um, but we've made sure that the window flange will cover those up and once we put the butyl tape and everything, it'll be fine. So once you're happy with your placement of the window, it's time to drill the hole. We've just got our drill with a metal drill bit and you want any size drill bit, but you need to make sure that your jigsaw blade will fit into the hole because that's the reason why we're drilling the hole. You wanna make sure that we protect around our hole. So we're gonna use some painter's tape. We got our jigsaw with our metal blade on it and we're gonna start cutting on this line. We have our multi-tool. This is a great tool when you're dealing with trying to cut out hat channels, especially if you're trying to not hit the sheet metal. Oh. Oh, shit. Oh my god. Uh, it's okay. We didn't cut it. Make check. sure you check your electrical wiring that runs through these beams. The side marker wire runs through the channel and we didn't notice that. Oopsies. Now that we have our hat channels cut down an inch and a half away from the edge, we are going to cut up some inch and a half square tubing to create our frame for the window. We've dry fit our window and everything's looking perfect. So now it's time to weld our frame together. And what you're gonna need for that is some steel and a welder. So a couple special considerations when welding. The hat channels are galvanized, so really recommend grinding off the galvanization because uh, that's not good if you breathe in the fumes while welding. Also, there's uh, insulation inside of the hat channels. So while you have it open, push that out of the way. If it's too close, it might catch on fire. We learned that the hard way. Now that we've dry fitted our window and we know that it fits, we've taken our window back out and we need to put it in for real now. To seal the window, we're gonna be using butyl tape. We like to use butyl tape because it's a bit more forgiving than foam back tape. Some manufacturers recommend using foam back tape when replacing an RV window. And in that circumstance, 
that's the thing to do if you have an RV and you're just replacing your window, follow your manufacturer's guidelines. Butyl tape's thicker and it squishes more, and we like that with our sheet metal sides. They might not be a perfect surface to mount to, and having something that's thicker and squishier it will more likely keep water out. So we're sticking with butyl tape. When applying your tape, start at the bottom in the middle and go all the way around in one continuous piece and end at the bottom again. So that gravity keeps the water out of the break in your tape. All right, windows installed. Looks pretty good, huh? But we have something to confess. Yes, we haven't actually installed it properly. We sort of skipped over the butyl tape and only put a couple of screws in the trim ring because we're gonna be taking this window out again when we get our bus spray insulated in a couple of weeks. Installing the window is the easiest part. It's building the frame and designing and making sure your placement is all good. That's the hard part, so. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope you found it really helpful on how to install RV windows into your sheet metal size of your schoolie. Please let us know if you have any more questions down below in the comments. We always reply to everything. And if you wanna check out the rest of our build, we'll have it linked below and we'll put a card up here on our whole series of our bus build so far. We hope you join us for the rest of our journey and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.